About four weeks ago, I went to an exhibition regarding safety. Now, during that exhibition, I, alongside many others, had the opportunity to experience a drowning simulator. Now, although this simulation was very crude, only containing of a headset and me on a chair, it felt very real. I felt like I was drowning. I fell off my chair in panic. And when all that was over, I thought of two things. First of all, I need to be careful around water. Second, after that somewhat traumatizing experience, I learned that virtual reality can teach people to act correctly in dangerous situations without consequence. Now, just a quick recap for anyone who doesn't know what virtual reality is. Virtual reality is a computer process where a computer tries to mimic 360 environments by stitching together a lot of images or videos. And this is most commonly and always done with a headset and two controllers in either hand. And this is perfect. This works. But I have a problem. They aren't immersive enough. It doesn't feel real. And what makes me sad is that all the technology we need to make this better has been existing and lying around for at least a decade or two. So today I'm going to talk about removing the line between reality and virtual reality. Would it be possible to create a simulation or an experience so real you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between either of them? Let's start with movement. Currently movement is dealt with joysticks in either hand. Every time you move them, you move in your simulation. That's not realistic at all. So let's remove that. Instead, we're going to opt for a principle that's been existing since 1964. 1964, that's how old this is. None of this is new. This is a mouse. If you remember in the 90s and maybe even early 2000s, mice actually had a ball inside of them, a small ball. And every time you moved your mouse, two rollers, uh, that being number six and seven, would turn when that ball turned. That was X and Y coordinates, just X and Y. And that would be sent to your simulator and it would know what to do with that information. We do the same thing. Take that principle, expanded by 500%. Now have the user stand on that ball. You've basically created a 360 treadmill. It works. Now, as you all can imagine, an issue being it's a ball. A ball is not a stable surface. Someone could very, very easily fall off this. So we add a safety mechanism, that also being very common. A baby walker. Yes, a baby walker. As a baby, when a child is practicing to walk, their parents might sometimes put them in a walker so they can practice walking without the fear or risk of the baby falling off. This is a quick uh, model I made up in uh, Sketchfab. This is very crude, but it gets the job done. You create a loop. You put your user in the loop. So there is no risk of your user falling out. Perfect. It's basically a baby walker without wheels. Now we have good movement. Let's get to feeling the game or the simulation, literally. If I am in a simulation where I am to be shot, how would I feel that? How would I feel like I got shot? How would I do that? Well, for that, we're going to be using, again, a very old piece of tech. This time in the medical field, it's known as a tense. These are small electric pads connected on critical points in your body and they send small amounts of electricity into your muscles. I know that sounds terrifying, but it's not. If you know what you're doing and you do it right in the proper spots, you can fake almost any sensation. I can make it feel like you're hot, cold, like you got shot. All this can be done just through a little bit of electricity on the right spot. We just put, connect these on the user. Now we have good feel. Next is input. Let's say I'm to grab something. Yes, I could do that with motion sensors. That is possible. 
but we're not going to do that. We're going to opt for a glove. This is known as a data glove or a wired glove. This is also very old. You basically have sensors on your glove and every time you move them, the computer creates a 3D model in your simulation. We're not going to be using uh, motion sensors because if I am to hold something, just like I said right now in the tents, we're going to have one pad on your hand. So every time you grab something, you feel like it's in your hand. Good. That's perfect. Let's get into your visuals, what you would see in your simulation. That will be about light. You see, light is our main form of reference. If we didn't have light, we would have been a different species altogether. We use light to understand if something's hot, cold, slippery, rough, wet. It's very important to us. And if you can create good lighting in, by a computer, you have a good scene. And we're going to do that by what's known as physically based rendering or PBR. I know that sounds confusing, but we'll talk about that. I want you to look at these two scenes, all right? This is A, this being A, and this being B. One of these is a picture of a hotel. The other was completely made in a computer. Raise your hands if you think A is the uh, real one. Two. All right, three. Raise your hand if you think this is the one. Okay, a bit more hands. Uh, I lied, they're both computer generated. And that was to show you how easy it is to lie to you. That's how good of a job PBR can do. If I didn't tell you that for a second, for a second, you believed me and you thought that was real. That's how good and realistic this is. It works off the simple principle of light and how it acts in real life. You basically tell a computer to shoot light at an object and according to that object's properties, reflect back off into our eyes. Do the same thing. Now you have good scenes, beautiful scenes. All right, now let's get into sound. How do you create good sound? For that, you're gonna need 360 sound. You've all maybe gone to a cinema where you've had surround sound, or maybe you have that in your house. That is also very old. It's known as stereo sound. Now, stereo sound takes advantage of the fact of positioning of the speakers. Today's speakers, or today's headphones, have separate speakers in either ear. That meaning, if I wanted to make something sound like it's coming from my left, I only play it on the left speaker, vice versa for right. Tweak these settings here and there. You can make it sound like birds are chirping from their building, construction is there, swans are over there, and these follow you around. It feels real. At this point, look at it, we have good movement, good input, good visuals, good output, everything is good. We have a good system. I could stop here, but I'm going to step into very dangerous territory when I say, what if I didn't want to eat? Let's see, just go with me. Let's say time I'd rather spend eating, I would want to spend in my simulation. We can do that. If any of you've been in a hospital, you know that they don't give you actual food most of the time. They connect a drip to you, and that is now your source of food. It's a small injection. And your body has nothing against this. It's getting the nutrients at once. Nothing's going wrong. This is perfectly fine. Okay. Even further into more dangerous territory. What if I didn't want to sleep? time I'd rather spend sleeping, I could use in my simulation. Sounds crazy. We do have the technology for that. It's not a technology, more say. The police actually have a, a psychedelic drug for this. Uh, you've probably heard that you have about four senses. No, you've got about 25. One of them being your sense of time. This drug slows that down by a lot. I can make you feel like you've served a thousand year sentence in eight hours real time. Take this with everything we've done before. Theoretically, theoretically, you never have to leave. Now, virtual reality is amazing. 
Surgeons can practice surgery on their patients without the risk of killing them. Firefighters can rescue people without the need of burning a building. People who have problems with public speaking or face depression can talk to people like this and build confidence. Or I could just live in my own wonderland, my own perfect world. I mean, who's stopping me from doing that? I could be out in my simulation partying with my friends in the most luxurious places from the comfort of my bedroom. I could go to my school class and never have to leave my house. Exhibitions like this would never have to take up space, physical space. You could have the same exhibition in virtual reality and instead of taking this space, you would take this amount of space on a hard drive. This is the future. So most people say that this is the future. Now, companies like Nokia and Kodak, they were big, big companies, the biggest in their fields. They went very down, very, very down because they didn't adapt to change. Adapting to change is important. Now, this brings up the ethical question. If we have a situation where we've created such a realistic world that is so real, you can't tell the difference. Do you have a need for reality anymore? Do you really need reality at this point? Does it have a use? Second question being, would any of you want to live in a world like this? It's your choice. I mean, some of you are saying, I have friends and family. Keep in mind, a computer using AI can re uh, recreate all of those family members and friends. Would any of you want to live in it? And third and last question, even though in this virtual reality you have limitless possibilities, would you want to live in a world where you have all the freedom you want, but at the end of the day you know that every single thing you do is fake? Thank you.